Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind Law Cree Fine Art. In today's vlog, I'm going to be talking a little bit about copyright laws. Because as it turns out, as artists, we break them all the time, and so many don't even realize that they're doing it. First off, let me just throw this out there. I am not a lawyer. I am not offering you legal advice. Go do your own research as needed. I'm just giving you some of the information as I understand it. So, starting off, copyright laws are actually pretty awesome because they're protecting you as artists. It's not just a matter of things you're not allowed to do. It's a matter of things that people aren't allowed to do to you. It really works to your benefit. You just need to understand what all that entails. First, the moment something's created, whether it be a painting or someone, to, a photographer took a photo, it's copyrighted to the creator or the photographer. So there's no leeway as far as, well, they didn't get it copyrighted yet, so I can use it really quick in my own work. That's not how that works. Once it's created, that work belongs to the creator, whether it be a painter, drawer, photographer, whatever. And I think so often as as artists, we forget photography is an art. The, so much work goes into taking good photographs, and so often those of us who paint and draw kind of take that for granted. Like, oh, they just snapped a photo, no big deal. I'm just gonna use their photo as my reference and not worry about their rights. That's not how that works. If someone else took a photo, though they retain copyright. You can't legally use it without getting their permission first. But one of the biggest myths that I hear all the time from artists, and I have heard this for years, people like to say, well, if you change the, the photograph or a painting, say it's another artist's painting that you're copying, whatever it is, you change it 10%, 20%, 30%, whatever it is, I've heard all different percentages, then it's an original, you've changed it enough that it now belongs to you and you can't get in trouble for copyright. That is a huge, huge myth. There's no percentage that you can change. If it's remotely recognizable that you based it off somebody else's work, it, you violated copyright. I mean, as a general rule, let's say you put your painting next to the painting that you were copying or the, the photograph that you were copying. If someone can look at that and go, yeah, that came from that. Yeah, you violate, it's, it's all over. You, you, you lose that. And the way that copyright laws work, they side strongly with the original creator. You, there's no, ar you're not gonna argue or come up with some genius argument on why, well, it's okay because I, I changed this amount. That's not, it, it just doesn't work that way. And there are exceptions, people who are doing parodies of things or satire, that sort of thing, and I'm not gonna touch that. That's a whole other thing. It really isn't what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is, I wanna paint a chickadee, so I went online and found a photograph of a chickadee that I really want to use. I changed the background, but I'm using this chickadee. And so I changed, you know, that's 20% because I changed the background so I can still use it. No, you can't. It's the same chickadee. If you put them side by side, I can tell that's from that photograph. That's where it's no, it's just not okay. Next, is it okay to use reference photos out of books or from field guides? Yes and no. It depends on what you mean by using them. If it means I'm going to paint a picture of a tiger and I want to see the areas of white, how far does the area of white come up on its neck, where does it stop when the orange starts? Yeah, you can look in a book and use that as reference. However, you can't find a photograph in that book of a tiger and copy it exactly. Not even like, oh, I moved the paw a little bit, so now it's 10% different. No, it does you can't do that. Same thing when you get into landscapes. Like I can find a photo online of a forest or the type of forest, like I wanna do aspen trees. So I can look and see how aspen trees are, how the spots are, all of that. What I cannot do is take that photograph and copy the, the positioning of the trees, the lighting on the trees, each little branch on the tree. You can't copy it exactly. I can just get a general idea of how those trees line up and then make it my own. And again, this goes for photographs that you found online as well. It, it's all, it belongs to the original photographer. By printing them, by posting them online, they're not giving you permission to use whatever they want. It does not matter if there's a copyright logo on there or not. Fact is, it belongs to whoever took the photo. One of my favorite things is Google image search. I regularly check to see if people are stealing my stuff, if it's being reproduced or used, because I can find it that way. There's a very good chance with the internet now that whoever the original photographer was or whoever the original artist was, if it was a painting you're copying, there's a very good chance if you're posting this online, it's not unheard of for them to find out about it. Here's the thing. Even though these, these copyright laws are very, very strict, if you contact the photographer, more often than not, they will give you permission to use their, their photo. Not a big deal. I mean, there was a painting I wanted to do with a scissor tail, and I found the most perfect photo of a scissor tail online. I couldn't find anything similar on any of the royalty-free sites or anywhere I could buy stock photos. No one had a photo as good as what this guy had. So I contacted him, let him know I wanted to use it in a painting, asked if that was okay. He gave me permission, and now, I, you know, I 
give credit to him in the painting when I've used that bird twice now. Most of the photographers I've talked to are very, very cool with having you use a piece of one of their photos for your paintings as long as they're getting credit. But don't just assume that. You need to contact them first. If you contact them and you never hear back, that's a no. Don't do it. And like that scissor tail, honestly, the thought crossed my mind. I wanted to use that photo so bad. It was just such a unique position of that bird. This beautiful, beautiful photo. I considered just not asking the guy and using it and assuming he'd never see it, but not only did that make me feel very dishonest, and it is it is stealing, but if he ever came across that painting, he could either sue me or he could demand that that photo uh, or any painting that I've done like that be removed, that I wouldn't be able to make prints. I mean, I really would be limiting myself if I didn't get permission first. If you're having a hard time getting reference photos on your own, there are places that you can either buy them, like Jason Morgan's Wildlife Reference CDs. He's got floral reference CDs, tons of different things. I'll put a link to his stuff below in the video description. I myself have purchased many of his CDs for reference that are great, great price considering how many photos that you get that are completely royalty free. You can copy them exactly, you can change them whatever you want, you can use that in your work. You also have sites like Paint My Photo where I'll also link that below in the video description, but you can go there and there are photographers posting stuff everything. Anything from shoes to people to hands, animals, you name it, there's a photo of it there that is available to you for free to use in your work with no royalty issues. So really there's not much benefit in using a photo that you haven't either gotten permission from or purchased the rights to use or from something like Paint My Photo. Next, what about things like Disney characters or Marvel, DC Comics, all of these different trademarked things that we've seen in movies or cartoons? Is it okay to draw them. No, not really. The exceptions again go into when you're doing parodies of stuff and that sort of thing, basically kind of making fun of them. But if you're doing serious work, basically, no. There are some exceptions, but for the most part, no. You cannot be copying a Disney character. You can't paint Finding Nemo and expect to be able to make prints. As I've heard people say, well, I painted it, it's mine. No, it's not. That character is trademarked. You can't paint that character. If you want to, you can contact the companies and get a license to paint their character. The thing is, there are tons and tons of limitations and restrictions on doing that, and it can cost you like $20,000. So it's generally, don't paint characters that do not belong to you. That said, if you want to paint Finding Nemo on your kid's wall, no one's really going to know about it, so there's always that argument. And I do know professional artists who will go into a school and paint a whole Disney scene. Legally, they can't do that, but people do it and just assume they won't get caught. It, it's risky. And I know a lot of us see, especially in Etsy, Etsy is notorious for this. There is so much work on Etsy that is copyrighted. I've even seen Twilight products painted onto shoes and sold on Etsy. That is violating copyright laws left and right. You cannot do that. But Etsy is really, really bad about not enforcing copyright. eBay, on the other hand, at least they used to, I don't know if they've changed this, but eBay is pretty good. If someone paints Superman and posts it on eBay, it usually gets removed before the auction's over. They fought, they're really big on following copyrights. So you just have to ask yourself, is it worth it? You may put all this time into painting and drawing something that you can't do anything with. Whoever holds copyright can demand it be taken off your website or off Facebook or where, wherever it is, which goes into the next thing. Well, what about fan art? Fan art's a funny thing because those who are doing fan art, and I've done it myself, you are walking a very fine line there. Generally, most companies are cool with fan art. But for example, say you wanted to draw a Game of Thrones character or a character from a movie. Most, as long as it's not marked as being official, like there's some kind of indication on that that it's fan art or unofficial, it's not related to the actual company who owns the trademark, they're generally okay with it. Some of these companies even go so far as to open fan art websites. Game of Thrones has a Tumblr page for people specifically that do fan art and they'll share with other people the fan art that you've done there. So some of these companies encourage it, but then there's some companies who are like absolutely no way and they will come after you if you draw their stuff. So you need to look into what it is you're doing and how to see how that company generally handles stuff. Normally fan art, you don't have a big issue, but at any point that one of these companies decides, you know what, we're not okay with this anymore, you could have to remove that item. That does not mean that you can make prints. You can't be selling it. Usually if you're not selling it, they're cool with it. As soon as you start making money off of it, that's not okay anymore. But again, technically, all fan art is a violation of copyright. All of that, every company that makes a character, it's all copyrighted, it's all trademarked. You legally cannot do it. It's kind of a messy thing because you can get in trouble for it, but you usually won't 
as long as you're not selling the items or trying to make a profit on them. Next, how long does a copyright last? Say an artist from 50 years ago painted something and they died a while back so I can just go ahead and paint that, repaint it myself and sign it and make copies, right? No. And the laws have changed, but as of, I think it was 1978, like January 1st, 1978, any work created from that point on was copyrighted for the life of the artist's work plus 70 years. So you've got a long wait for anything from that period. Before that, I forget how long it was. It, it was something similar, not quite as long. They tapped on more time now, but you've got a long time that that work is going to be copyrighted. And that's not always going to be like set in stone because people can have their copyright, the time frame extended. Look into, do your research. If you are gonna copy like something from the old masters, if it's from several hundred years ago, you're probably okay. But, and even that technically, if it's out of copyright, then yeah, you can be making paintings of that and sell that and re re do reproductions that way. But check your dates and check the law on whatever it is that you are looking to make a reproduction of. Now, moving on to our own stuff. Now, you've produced your own original artwork and you're all excited about it. Do you need a copyright logo on it? No, it's copyrighted whether that logo is on there or not. It's just a good idea to remind people, hey, this is mine, you can't copy it. People will copy it anyway. People steal everything. But you're tech you don't have to have the copyright logo, but I would put that there with a watermark. Yeah, with Photoshop, that can all be removed. I know how to remove them myself, but it's I, I like to put them on there just as a slight deterrent. Next, is it okay to copy things that is out of an actual tutorial teaching you how to paint, like Bob Ross or someone copying one of my paintings or any kind of book that you might find out there? Is it okay? Can I just copy those paintings? Because it's made for copying, so I that's not copyrighted, right? No, though you can't do that either. To, yeah, you can paint it for your own use to learn for yourself. That doesn't mean that you can make prints out of it or be selling it. Yeah, most of the time if you're selling it just to someone locally, no one's gonna know the difference. But legally, you're not able or not supposed to be selling that. It's not intended for that. Any of these tutorial books, any tutorial videos, they are not meant for you to turn around and be copying the exact same thing and selling. Like every one of my videos is copyrighted. Not because I had to submit it for copyright, but because as soon as I've created it, it belongs to me. Now, that said, if you are learning and you do copy one of my videos, I would love for you to share it with me. I'd love to see it. I'm not cool with you going around and making prints. That gets into an issue. But if you're making it for your own use, your practice, you're giving it away to family members, whatever, I would love to see it. If you want to post it on my Facebook page or any of the social media stuff, again, I'd love to see that. I love seeing your work that you've created from stuff you've learned from me. But the way that those are intended with these tutorials, it's pretty much like, say I paint a scene inside a scene and I've got the water spilling out and you like that concept paint your own version. I mean, you can copy mine while you're learning, just don't make prints, but once you get to where you do want to be making your own, you can use the same concept, just change it. Use a different forest, use different colors, different backgrounds, different elements in there, make it your own. What's the point in recreate? Like, if you're trying to make prints on your own and you're doing this to make money, what is the point in copying something that's already been done? So anyway, that's pretty much all I'm gonna cover. There is tons of information on what you can and can't do as far as copyrights go. Again, I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. This is stuff that you guys should look into on your own and just, you need to be aware of it because even if it's something that you didn't realize you were violating copyright, it, you can still get in trouble for it. So definitely do your research, make sure you're aware of what is and isn't okay. I have video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, and vlogs most weekends. So make sure you subscribe and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those social media sites, links below in the video description. And you can keep up with my newest work and get see some real-time clips of whatever it is that I am currently working on. I'll see you guys Tuesday. Hi guys, if you enjoyed this vlog, please let me know in the comments below or give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And if you have ideas for topics for future vlogs, let me know that in the comments below as well. I'll see you guys later.